Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is Jamestown 1619, the very beginning. And of course, we have with us to talk about the establishment of Jamestown and some of the things that uh, grew out of such establishment, uh, Dr. Lewis Baldwin mm -hmm. uh, from Vanderbilt University. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, let me welcome you to the show this Thank morning. You. Thank you. And to uh, once more say how delighted <laughs> we are to have you with us this morning. Because, delighted uh, to be here. Well, you bring us such excellent information, yeah. Dr. Baldwin. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, sort of a historical touch in your uh, gospel, <laughs> your religious ministry Thank you. in Thank a real you. sense, and so and we appreciate that. Thank but you. today, what we'd like to do, Dr. Baldwin, is to uh, talk about the very, very beginning of the African American experience right. in North America, That's recognizing right. that Jamestown certainly is not the first establishment of where Africans were found mm. in the Americas, but mm. uh, uh, we do know that Jamestown played a significant role Absolutely. in the establishment of uh, slavery uh -huh. in the American yeah, colonies yeah, uh, that would what would eventually be known as the American colonies, uh -huh. and so we look at that look at that as the very very beginning. Yeah, exactly. And so what we'll do, Dr. Baldwin, is to uh, have you to give us some information in reference to your background, your education, uh -huh. and some of your experiences, and then uh, we'll have an opportunity, even during that segment, to start talking about uh, the establishment of Jamestown and uh, what it meant from 1619 mm. to, to, 2019. Be, to 2019, yeah. celebrating in a real sense, what, almost 400 years yeah, exactly. of the black presence in, in North America. That's right. Okay, very good. Well, I grew up in uh, Camden, Alabama, Wilcox County, Alabama, as I'd said many times before. Uh, I uh, studied in the um, public school system in uh, Wilcox County or Camden, Alabama graduated from Cameron Academy High School in 1967. Mm -hmm. From there to Talladega College in Talladega, Alabama. I was there from 1967 to 71, graduated with a BA in history. From there to Crozer Theological Seminary in Rochester, New York, where I received the MA in 1973 and the uh, MD, Master of Divinity in mm -hmm. 1975. And of course, I left Crozer in 1975, began uh, my PhD studies at Northwestern University. Mm -hmm. And of course, I completed the PhD in 1980. Uh, from that point, of course, I uh, taught at Worcester College in Ohio, mm -hmm. from there to Colgate University in New York. And of course, in the fall of 1984, I uh, took a position at Vanderbilt University, professor of religious studies, and I was at Vanderbilt from 1984 to my retirement in 2013. And have uh, produced how many books, Dr. Baldwin? Well, I've, I've authored six books on Dr. King and uh, co-authored a couple and co-edited a couple of books on Dr. King and also edited a couple of volumes for a total of 14 books. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of my career as a scholar has been devoted to mm -hmm. uh, research and scholarship on Dr. King. You know, Dr. Baldwin, every time you come to us, I try to get that information from you because I think it's such an encouraging part of uh, what we do here, to uh, encourage folks to get out, read, research, write, mm -hmm. become more knowledgeable in reference to the uh, African, well, the American experience. Exactly. In a real sense. And I think we're going to talk about uh, the African and the American experience today when we talk about uh, the establishment of uh, Jamestown. You certainly can't separate Can't two. separate them, at, not yeah, at all. Exactly, you see. And, exactly. And even though uh, uh, slavery would be established at Jamestown uh, with the introduction of Africans, yeah. we do know that uh, slaves were not indentured servants. Exactly, and of course, exactly. I think that you now, know the now some historians use those terms, terms but uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Right. When Africans that's, that's right. were introduced to America, 
that, they were viewed differently and that, treated that's differently. Exactly. Uh -huh. And and you had uh, de facto slavery before you had uh, the Jewish that's slavery. That's right. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. And so what we want to do today, after our first commercial break, is to uh, allow you to talk about the establishment of Jamestown yeah. and some of the things that were associated with that for the next eight minutes, and then we'll have a, a ten-minute segment, and we'll be able to uh, cover most of. Uh, that information but mm -hmm. in the meantime we'll just deal with Jamestown during the second segment exactly. uh, which is about eight minutes and then we'll mm -hmm. have an opportunity to make some suggestions in reference to slavery, racism and all mm -hmm. of those other things during the last ten minutes and, That's right. and of course we'll be back with our audience following this very very short commercial mm -hmm. break. Mm -hmm. And as you reminded me, 1619, 2019, yeah. 400 yeah. years. And then, you know, at the last segment, we can deal with what's going on in terms of uh, celebrating, okay. uh, commemorating okay. these events okay. and what churches and other institutions might but, yeah, do. Very good. Because I've seen very little interest in what, in that day. Uh -huh. among churches outside of Virginia. Uh-huh, that's right. That's Our exactly institutions, it. It's not a state. Uh-huh, that's, that's right. right. That's right. And I think this will give you an opportunity. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We talked to Dr. Lewis Baldwin from Vanderbilt University, and he's given us some information in reference to the establishment of Jamestown mm -hmm. in Virginia in 1619. Of course, Dr. Baldwin, uh, I think that uh, that is a very, very important date exactly. in terms of the introduction of Africans mm. into uh, North America. So exactly. let's talk about it from that perspective. Well, we know that in, in August of 1619, the first 20 Africans mm. landed in Virginia in August 1619. And mm. according to scholars like John Hope Franklin mm. and Lerone Bennett, that was the beginnings, as you said, mm. of the African presence in English North, North America. America. Very exactly. good. Exactly. So 1619 is an important date. It's actually a year before the, Pu the Puritans landed mm -hmm. in America because, as you well know, Jerome Bennett wrote this book before the Mayflower. Mayflower, that's and exactly he, he emphasizes the fact that, that African the, the, slaves the, the, were, were here before, before the, the Puritans. Pilgrims. And right. we know that among those 20 Africans who landed in Jamestown in 1619 were the names Antony, Isabella, and Pedro. Mm -hmm. And we know that Isabella and Antony married, mm -hmm. and they actually produced the first African born mm -hmm. in the English colonies, a boy by the name of William Fuqua, mm -hmm. they named him. So you have to go back to 1619, I think, in order to understand mm -hmm. what, was, what happened subsequently, because you have the foundation mm -hmm. of black history in America. Mm -hmm. Black history begins there. Mm -hmm. In, in at 1619 Jamestown. at Jamestown. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that you have the development of slavery. By 1661, Virginia mm -hmm. had established a kind of statutory recognition of slavery. Mm -hmm. It became legal. But even before it became legal in 1661, it was, in fact, slavery in 1619, uh -huh. de facto right. slavery, uh -huh. before you had the Jewish slavery. So I think we fail to recognize that if you're going to understand the history of black people in America, you got to begin with 1619, mm -hmm. 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. And August of this year will represent, as you well know, the 400th, 400th anniversary mm -hmm. of, of black presence in America. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that is information that a lot of folks might have known, but I think somewhere along the way we forgot that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A lot of, lot of us, we've read scholars like Ivan Van Sertima, mm -hmm. who argues that blacks were here before Columbus. Mm -hmm. We know that blacks came over in the 1400s. Mm -hmm. They were explorers. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. They accompanied the French and Spanish explorers. Mm -hmm. Some were with Columbus, the Italian explorer. Mm -hmm. But when you're going to talk about the establishment good. of slavery, mm -hmm. or the establishment of black presence in America, mm -hmm. 1619. Jamestown is the, is the place James where Jamestown is uh -huh. the place that you got to look at. Mm -hmm. And 1619, August 1619, mm -hmm. to be more specific, mm -hmm. is the date. Talk about that, uh, Dr. Baldwin. I mean, why, why is that date significant? And uh, say, give some things in terms of your historical scholarship that will sort of bring all of that information together for people who might not be familiar with some of the things that we're talking about. I, I think it's important in so many ways. First of all, if you're going to understand the Im impact of black people on the development of America, you got to look at 1619, because that was the moment I think uh, at which black people began to have this powerful and indelible influence mm -hmm. on the history of America. Mm -hmm. So you're not just talking about black history, you're talking about American, American history. history. Mm -hmm. Also, from that point in 1619, there would always be a question about what does it mean to be American? Mm -hmm. What is democracy? Mm -hmm. So I would argue that, that at that very point, black people became the critical issue in American history. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you had the enslavement of these 20 Africans, uh, we have to remember that the Puritans and others who came over, mm -hmm. they were in search of freedom. Mm -hmm. They were moving away from uh, conditions in England and other parts of Europe where they, they were enslaved and they lacked freedom. Mm -hmm. So they came to America to experience freedom, to experiment mm -hmm. in freedom. But Africans were forcibly brought Good. here uh -huh. from a situation of freedom into a situation so of enslavement. Good. Good. So yeah. I think you begin to have the question of, of what is America? Mm -hmm. How can we profess on the one hand to be a land of freedom mm -hmm. while holding certain people in bondage? Mm -hmm. So I think in, with 1619, we have the beginnings of, this kind of uh, these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm about what does it mean to be America? How can we, on the one hand, reconcile our professions mm -hmm. and our values of freedom with the enslavement of certain segments of the American population? So I think, again, that that, that, that represented a moment, August 1619, represented a moment when blacks began to have this powerful and indelible influence mm -hmm not only on America, but on what it means to, to be, be American uh -huh. and what is the nature of our democratic values, how do we define our democratic values, our democratic institutions, mm -hmm. our democratic traditions. And it was a long period that Africans were slaves from 1619 to 1865. Exactly, now, that, that, that's exactly. A long, that's a long, I mean, that's time. A long period, that's, you see. That's, that's more than 200, 200 years. years. But in order to understand the kind of institutionalized slavery that developed, mm -hmm. 1619 is the date. Mm -hmm. You know, because at that point, not only were Africans enslaved, but you had the de dehumanization of uh, Africans. Mm -hmm. And you know we came along with the Constitution and the Three-Fifth Compromise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and the Dred Scott decision uh -huh. and all of this that occurred. You can't understand these developments uh -huh, uh -huh. apart from what occurred uh -huh. in 1690. That's right. And how do you count slaves? Exactly. You know, are they property? Are they individuals? Exactly. And so what we want to do, we'll make a property and individuals. Exactly. And we'll just call them three-fifths exactly. of an individual. So that, makes the, that speaks, I think, to the uniqueness of the 1619 mm -hmm. event. Because you not only had the establishment of institutionalized slavery in time, the beginnings of that, mm -hmm. but you also had a process that led to the dehumanization of African mm -hmm. people. And we are still dealing with the legacy of that today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so what we'll do, Dr. Baldwin, we'll take uh, our uh, first commercial break. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, the end of this first segment. And uh, then we'll have an opportunity to uh, talk about uh, some of the events in reference to uh, the enslavement of the African uh, during the second segment and the third segment we might be able to talk about what people are doing mm -hmm. in order to recognize 1619 exactly. because we want to make it a very very important day and we'll be back with our audience following this very very short commercial break. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Talking the second segment and third segment, how we are celebrating it. Uh huh. Today. Okay. Very good. The legacy of, of sixteen. Minutes. Okay. The legacy of sixteen. Now that be an eight minute. This segment. segment yeah. yeah. Eight minute segment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. That's going well. It's going mm -hmm. well. Is this the ten minute segment? Yes. Are you sure of that? Yeah. Okay, well, we, we've had some problems with that. Right? <laughs> At least I've had some problems. I've not had any problems. Uh, I think it's the second segment. They said, no, it's the third segment. And then they, well, yeah. you know, we had it last yeah, yeah. time. You know, you sit up here for, yeah. you know, five shows, three segments a piece. That's 15 segments. And you mm -hmm. forget whether this is the first, the third, or the final, or whatever, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then, that's good. Uh, Stand by for the third segment. This is the final segment. Yeah. This is the final? This is the final last 10 minutes. Okay. Uh. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin, and he's given us some information in reference to the establishment of Jamestown, Virginia mm -hmm. in 1619. Of course, Dr. Baldwin, I think you've already laid out a very, very good pattern in reference to that. Let's continue that. Okay. We can talk about the legacy of 1619. You don't hear a lot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, when you speak of racism, of course, that's part of the legacy in the form of white supremacy, mm -hmm. especially. You can talk about racial polarization mm -hmm. because that's part of the legacy of 1619. Mm -hmm. You can talk about uh, uh, established class distinctions, mm -hmm. poverty, because I think, uh, you know, poor people came from Europe to America in the 1600s, mm -hmm. but you can't talk about the rigid class distinctions mm -hmm. And, and the separation between rich and poor mm -hmm. without also looking at 1619. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. scholars like Eugene Genovese talks about slavery mm -hmm. as an institution based on class. Mm -hmm. And of course, 1619, I think, illustrates that as well. We also talk about nativism and xenophobia in this country. Good. Today. All right. Uh -huh. we, we talk about today. those, but uh -huh. we don't realize that Africans were among the first immigrants. Mm -hmm. And there were many Americans from Europe who didn't want them here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who felt that they were not born here, they were not a part of the culture, mm -hmm. uh, not a part of the establishment of the nation. So nativism and xenophobia, which is, of course, fear of foreigners, mm -hmm. uh, victimized Africans. The mm -hmm. first Africans were victimized mm -hmm. by that, beginning with, with Jamestown, of mm -hmm. course. And also you have to take into account anti-immigrant sensibilities. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about uh, at that today. Mm -hmm. uh, talk against immigrants, uh, Muslims, and immigrants from black and brown countries. Mm -hmm. But that, you have to go back to 1619 to understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Because even at that time, there were Europeans who set foot in this country and established themselves in this country. Mm -hmm who didn't want Africans here. Well, that, where, 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 where did slavery come from? Exactly. Why slavery? Exactly. That's exactly what exactly. you Exactly. Know. It was not until that, the early 19th century right. that Europeans really accepted the fact that slavery could be profitable. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. in, in, in the 1600s, mm. there were questions about it, but the economic profitability uh -huh. of slavery That's right. had become evident by the early uh -huh. part of the 19th uh -huh. century, so there was a change in attitude. Mm -hmm. But in the early years, the 1600s, et cetera, mm -hmm. blacks were among those, those who came to this country who mm -hmm. were not fully accepted. Mm -hmm. They were not fully accepted after slavery also. But in those early years, there were arguments about whether or not blacks were human, All right. whether uh -huh. or not they had souls. Mm -hmm. so